Time to wake up and welcome to another episode here for the Funk the Pod. And it's Monday. And you know what that means. Back in your life, <laughs> the OG from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, MMA Monday here for the Funk It Pod. And as always, if you are a new listener, I appreciate you. I appreciate you returning once as well, of course. Even more so, because it means you can kind of put up with my stuff, which is a, which is which is leaving me speechless, which is appreciated. Um, but for those who are new, I'm not reviewing like all the events, the UFC fights or whatever, not not necessarily previewing all of them. I do review and preview one, one championship events because I've been following one for forever. I've been living in Bangkok, in Thailand forever. So I go to lots of those events. So I think I might have the ability to bring the fires a bit closer to you than, than many others. Um, but I don't review UFC stuff. Usually what I do is... Um, because I'm a media professor so at university, so I talk about like how the media is being used and like build-ups to the match, what could be done better, what fighters could do better, and so on. All right, but first things first, um, and two big things that we have to discuss in this week's MMA um, Hour Monday, um, which is, well, first one championship happened, and I just have all the fights uh, here in front of me, so I don't that I don't forget any. Um, one championship happened um, again here in Lumpini Stadium at Lumpini Stadium, which is an awesome stadium. It's like they always say, like the Madison Square Garden of the East, which is kind of true when it comes to to Muay Thai, Thai boxing. Like Lumpini Stadium is the mecca. It's like if you win there, you made it. Problem is, if you watched one championship, they can't fit an octagon in there. So then. If they're there, it's MMA also in the ring. And like some ridiculous things happen, right? Like when the, the fighters then somehow get tangled up after a takedown close to the close to the ropes and maybe like a, a limp or something is out of the ropes and they have to let go for a second and then continue or the referee just pull them both back in. <laughs> like it happened in like one of the, the, the female fights. Like that's just a bit ridiculous. Like... Uh, like if, if only there would be a structure that could prevent it. And I understand it's hard to probably get that into Lumpini Stadium. Usually one championship here in Bangkok, they're in a, or they used to be at Impact Arena, which is like a huge multi-purpose arena like any other arena. But now they, they, they moved to um, Lumpini for their Friday Friday fights, which are great, which are 80% like Muay Thai or kickboxing matches. Um but yeah, so if, if they're then doing like, may, maybe it's so cheaper or they like the atmosphere, right? because the atmosphere really is like awesome in that stadium. So maybe that's why they keep going there now, but then they can set up an octagon, which is a bit of a, I don't know, a downer. So, I mean, the stadium is awesome. I, I love it. It's really great. And for those who have been watching, listening to this, you know that I'm a Muay Thai person, so I, I, I'm all for that. But um, MMA out of an octagon is just kind of weird, to be, on, to, to be honest. Anyway, so we had a few few interesting matches there happening. Um, the main event, of course, being John Lineker versus Fabrizio Andrade 2 in the first uh, match for, their, for the title. And John Lineker missed weight, so he got stripped of the title. And then Fabrizio Andrade picked him apart for like the entirety of the fight, but then... Uh, had a low blow, uh, kicked John Lineker in the nuts. His cup broke. Definitely not a Thai cup. Thai cups are made of steel, so they don't break. Um, and so then it was a no contest, and that's why we had like now this matchup four months later. Great match, um, great fight. Um, Fabricio started Wonder Boy, by the way. Uh, that's the Wonder Boy that talks trash, and unlike um, the other Wonder Boy. Um, Fabricio and Draj started really, really, really well. Um, Picked up where he left out last time around. He said he's going to finish it within three rounds. That was not the case. Like John Lineker, who looks like the Hulk, by the way. I mean, he he looked ripped before, but now that uh, that match Asai in in Brazil. Oh my god! Uh, um, so he looks he looked he looked, he looked <laughs> insane, and he clearly improved. He, he prepared his game plan for, for Andrade, clearly. Um, he was hanging in there and he was giving Andrade like, also something to think of, like some really heavy shots. I mean, his nickname is Hands of Stone, so eh, 
Um, heavy shots there, but then eventually in round four, Andrash connected, found his groove a bit more, and then Tolinica wouldn't answer the call to round five because like a nasty cut over his right eye, if I'm not mistaken, and just couldn't see anymore. Uh, so they stopped it, which is which makes sense. So good corner work there, I think. If your fighter can't see, like why why let him go out and get and and I don't know suffer more damage, right? So and new Fabricio Wonder Boy Andrash, well deserved. Looking very much forward to to his, the next matchup. Um, he's a very exciting fighter. He's not like just holding back or like taking playing it safe at least not up until now. So, Fabricio Andrade, congratulations! Um, and new. It was really. It was also a fun fight to watch, in, in my opinion. Um, co main event was Tavanchai PK Sanchai um, versus Jamal Yusupov uh, Muay Thai, which was great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hesitating just because I I I, I, <laughs> I expected like a, a a crazy back and forth, and then it was like a a leg kick that uh, from Tavanchai that just sealed the deal like within like I think 48 seconds or something. One leg kick and whatever happened when with Yusupov's leg, he was just limping back, and then that was that was it. It's just like boop, a quick leg kick. I mean, Tavanchai kicks ridiculously hard, obviously, but the placement must have been just perfect. Like Yusupov just just couldn't walk, couldn't stand anymore, um, couldn't even come out to like the the when the when the hands got raised of Tavanchai. So Tavanchai defends his title. Easily in this case, but which was a bit, the one perfect kick, like perfect low kick. Um, yeah, well, well done, Tavanchai. Didn't really break a sweat, but um, I mean, Tavanchai is, is the future of, of Muay Thai in Thailand. So um, look out for, for more of him. And one championship usually rebooks those guys really fast, especially if they haven't taken any damage. So that that, that should be, you should see Tavanchai again rather soon. I wouldn't be surprised if he would. He would be added to the the May card in the US actually maybe because I mean he's he's got the looks he's got he's got the skills um, he's just too polite on the mic <laughs> Tavancha you gotta you gotta tr talk more trash man um, Coco main event so to speak we had Martin Nguyen versus Leandro Casotti and Martin Martin Nguyen uh, took the UD the former champ um, kind of like found himself again, found his groove again. Um, clear UD for Martin Nguyen. Good job. The situation. <laughs> um, well, Martin Nguyen was one of the first ones who really got me interested in one championship. I mean, I've, I've been following it before, but I mean, Martin Nguyen popped up. I was like, oh yeah, he's like, he's like active, aggressive, throwing random stuff, jumping stuff. It was just fun to watch Martin Nguyen. And I'm, I'm glad that he, he found his groove again, which is really nice. Um, we also had Samapet Fairtex versus Shang Cheng Long. Um, Samapet took this by UD also. Um, no questions asked there. What was a, a crazy back and forth was Eko Roni Saputra from Indonesia, like a new up and coming superstar that they've been pushing a lot versus the old guard, Danny King. And Danny King is not old by any means, but he's been around in forever in the bantamweight division. And um, Danny King had actually also fought. Um, Fought Mighty Mouse in his first, second bout or something, if I'm not mistaken, um, in MMA, and now he's just fighting pure kickboxing. So awesome! That was not kickboxing. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. What am I saying? Uh, fly, it's flyweight. I'm sorry, I misread. That's clearly not kickboxing. So flyweight, exactly flyweight. And T T Danny King has been around forever, um, and he just showed to Ronnie Saputra, like a hey, Ronnie Saputra, like, "Hey man, I'm not just the the placeholder, and I'm not just a gatekeeper here." Um, he in the first in the beginning, Ronnie Saputra, Eko Ronnie Saputra, like was bullying him a little bit. You're like, oh shit, he's like so much more powerful. But then Danny King had adjusted, tripped him, took him down, which is usually Eko Ronnie Saputra's game, uh, and then clearly won. I mean, Dom, that was fantastic. It was a great, great fight, great adjustment. But Danny King got. Um, I'm glad that they, he got the decision because was, he was clearly winning round two and three. Uh, so yeah, fantastic. Um, we had a Daniel Kelly versus Ayaka Miura. Um, there was also uh, no like, yeah, no no wiggle room. That's what I'm trying to say between uh, Daniel Kelly and Ayaka Miura. Um, UD round one, and we had uh, also Andre Stoika versus Francia, Francesco Chaya. Um, 
I'm just scrolling a little bit because where is it? Oh yeah, here it is. We had also Adrian Matthijs, which was great because Adrian Matthijs has been around for a bit. Then I haven't seen him in a while and now he's back against Xilang Shaxi from China and he went out there and went right after it. Like like Adrian Matthijs just went after it after it and just landed like some, some huge shots and took out um, Xilang Shaxi. Uh, in round one, that was pretty cool. Like I've seen Adrian Matas like a few times. It's just nice to see like an, an OG back again, um, reinvigorated. If you want to, uh, 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 the overall was a gr- like I, I say that some sometimes right. Like people tell me I hate on one because sometimes I leave, I leave like snarky comments or I criticize that they never tell us how they make money. But the events themselves are nice. I mean that they're, they're cool. Do they have to give out like a buttload of free tickets to fill the arenas? Yes, they do. Does it take away from from the awesome fights? No, it doesn't. So the fights are fantastic. So if there is if next one championship, next one fight night, I didn't even review the fight night. Now the fight night that always happens Friday nights, evenings here in uh, Asian Asian time, South Asia time. Um, the pay per views usually now happen like Saturday morning here in Asia, Friday night in the US. Yeah, so if you have a chance to watch it, watch it. If you have a chance to go live, go live. It's fantastic. And yes, there are free tickets everywhere. So go, go. It's fantastic. So I'm not hating on one championship. One championship has awesome fighters, awesome events. It's just a bit of a dodgy business, but that's not a fighter problem. So the fighters are fantastic and I can't wait for the next event. And I also can't wait for the next pay-per-view. I'm going to watch the Friday fights on Friday. I'm going to watch the pay-per-view, which will be then showed or will have the return of Anatoly Malikin, for example, um, versus Acham Bula to unify the heavyweight titles. Going to be awesome when, when Malikin just destroys Acham Bula. <laughs> Unbiased journalist here as well. Um, <laughs> so one championship, the fights are awesome. The events are, are, are cool. The rest up in the air for, for debate but the events and fight, fighters are awesome so check it out okay enough of the review now we will have another review done next week when I will review the Friday fights again um, but this week we also have of course to talk about UFC why? well because <laughs> it's happening the return of the Mac is happening while my notes app is uh, crashing so thank you, Apple, for making this notes app so stable. Um, but okay, I, maybe I don't even need the notes because we all know what's happening, what's, who's coming back. It's the return of the Mac. It's the return of John Jones. John Jones versus Cyril Gunn. And again, I'm not, not previewing it and I'm not going to review it, but I'm going to like focus on like the media. And I mean, John Jones has done quite a bit of media. I have, he wasn't on DC and RC as far as I'm concerned yet. Um, even though he said he's cool with DC, also, I, I don't follow DC and RT anymore because, quite frankly, DC is... I, I can't handle DC anymore. I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Um, yeah, I don't... I, I just can't. I just can't. I just... I just. He says he's unbiased. But he's clearly not unbiased. And... Um, I don't know. Like, I, I find myself agreeing with RC even more and appreciating RC more um, than actually DC... So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, but for, for John Jones's return, so what the UFC is doing great, of course, like the, all those sound bites, those trailers, like he's back and then the Joe Rogan stuff, like in between and, and Rogan screams, like he's the goat and all those things, um, which, which is true probably. Um, so the UFC, the UFC is great with pay-per-views. Like last year, I criticized that they don't promote anything else. Besides the pay-per-views, not even everybody on the pay-per-view, but um, in this case, of course, all eggs in John Jones' basket, of course. They could promote Cyril Garn a bit more. Cyril Garn could also do a bit more, to be honest. Like, I haven't seen Garn on many outlets yet. I haven't seen any posts of his. Um, so he could do more there. He could be like, why he, it's his destiny to take down John Jones and stuff like this and not just like, it's my time. It's a bit boring because everybody says that. But the UFC is pushing that that event, of course, a lot because that's what's going to make them make them money. Um, John Jones so far also has like not messed up yet, so good for him. Um, he's been on like a few outlets with Bo- Okamoto, uh, Bre- Okamoto, not with Bokamoto, Blackamoto, uh, Brett o- Okamoto. <laughs> Damn it! 
<laughs> um, which is fine. Hasn't been on Ariel for some reason. <laughs> um, other than that, yes, I, it, it's a classic. It's a classic build up. Um, I'm a bit disappointed because I think you could still do more with it. You could you could like be more theatrical with it. You could like hype the importance more. Um, what they're trying is they they completely ignore that Francis Ngannou exists. Um, they're like, yeah, Cyril Gan has been dominating. In, in the countdown video, like it says, like Cyril Gunn has been dominating the heavyweight division for the past years. Has he? Has he? <laughs> when? When he got lucky against Taito Iwasa? When he got taken down by, by Francis Ngannou on one leg? When has when did he dominate? Not to say he's not awesome. Of course he's awesome, right? And of course he has like some dominant victories. But has he dominated the division for years? I wouldn't say so. And what about Stipe? Like completely ignoring Stipe, who's still signed with the UFC. Like a revisionist history, but that's what the UFC is doing all the time, relying on the fans not catching up. So I, I think that's a, that's just that doesn't help anyone. So they could be you could be more theatrical. Like okay, Ngano is gone. Who's gonna be the next king in town? Who's gonna be the one, the guy, the baddest man on the planet? Because it's up for grabs. The baddest man on the planet left or. Don't call him that and call him like the former champ left because he's scared. He's scared of what's, what's about to happen. What, who's, he's scared of like what he could, might have to face, for example. That's why Sir Gahan steps in. That's why John Bone Jones is now there to take the crown that belongs to him, to make him like this two division champion, the eighth or ninth in MMA history. You can blow this thing up way more without like this revisionist history. Um, how he fights has to fight his demons and and so on. Now he found he 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 beat the demons, and now it's time to beat Cyril Gunn. Oh God, UFC, you should hire me for storytelling. Uh, co-main event, <laughs> yeah, of course, John Jones wins. Um, co-main event, uh, Valentina Shevchenko, the bullet, which I have to root for because her Thai is just really nice. That she speaks Thai. Um, she always wise when she comes in, into the, the, the Thai greeting when she, when she goes into the ring in the octagon or when she leaves and stuff like this um, she always speaks a little bit of Thai in interviews which is nice um, Pom Rak Valentina um, so she faces Alexa Grasso who really took a lot of time to get into her own but again not reviewing it um, glad she's there now there's zero zero build up for this fight on UFC on UFC side right now so again we know this already um, they only go for the superstars apparently Valentina is not a big enough of a star for them which is ridiculous uh, so fighters it's on the fighters so Valentina uh, it's, and Alexa Grasso in, part, in particular she should be out there she should take a, a, a book out of out of Juliana Pena's playbook like just be loud be vocal tell the world to tune in and watch her be the one taking down valentina shevchenko why not like i mean that's your one shot like make it make it count make people tune in make people spend money on you give you the money root for you root against you make people feel something just being quiet doesn't help like if you're quiet you really now have to beat her because otherwise no one's gonna care at all you're gonna like yeah didn't care about you before. Now you got beat. So go back. Go to the back. To the back. To the end of the line. Oh God! Today I'm not good at speaking. I'm sorry. Uh, but yes, Alexa Grasso should do way more. Valentina too, but she's a champ, so whatever. But Alexa Grasso should do way more media there. We also have Jeff Neal versus Shafkat Rachmanov, and I like Jeff Neal, but yeah, it's Shafkat time. Obviously, um, both of, none of them is e anywhere to be seen in the media. Um, also ridiculous. Same goes for Mateusz Gamrod versus Jalen Turner, of course. At least Jalen Turner is like a little somewhat vocal on social media, which is good for him. Um, Gamrod, not. And he speaks English quite okay, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, yeah, why is he not more vocal? So, again, I'm blaming the f not only the UFC, because the UFC always does about I'm blaming the fighters here as well. So, um, the Gamrod Turner Gamrod is like 7th rank Turner 10th rank Turner is the one that makes some noise at least a little bit on social media or on media um, in interviews and so on which is good Gamrod doesn't do anything and um, the 
featured main event, uh, not featured, the, the first event on the main card, is Bo Nickel versus Jamie Pickett. And of course, at least Bo Nickel is at least vocal out there, giving Pickett props, but also telling the world that he's going to dismantle him. And that's what you want to hear. And he's a highly touted prospect, so of course he has to do that. Um, prelims, we have... Cody Garbrandt versus Trevin Jones. No offense to Trevin Jones from Guam. I have not heard of him before. Cody Garbrandt also being a completely quiet, which is fair based on his previous on his previous performances. But dude, it's probably your last chance to turn your career around. So um, woo, I mean, and those fighters all have names, and they they don't do. Sh We have Derek Brunson versus Drickus Duplessis as well. I didn't even know that. Um, uh, Derek Brunson at least like is like trying to be funny on social media, which he is not. But at least he's he's vocal there. Um, Drickus Duplessis DDP. Um, also haven't heard much of him, but it's a qu quick turnaround though, which is good for him. Um, but he should be more vocal too. He's he's a he, he's funny in interviews. He's very confident in interviews. So why not put yourself out there a bit more? Um, Same goes, of course, for Viviano Arujo versus Amanda Hibas. Um, no, Amanda Hibas is only number 15 now. I'm just seeing this here. Oh, God, Amanda, what happened? Um, Amanda, is, Amanda Hibas is, has, has an active social media account, um, but could also do more to hype fights. There. Same goes for Julian Marquez and Mark andre Barrio. I don't know Mark andre Barrio. Julian Marquez really really missed the train, the bus, the, missed all, all the public transportation with, with, with this Miley Cyrus thing there. Um, I would have been so jealous if that would have worked. Yeah, so that that's really uh, missed opportunity for, for Julian Marquez. I, I think I'm just repeating myself right now when I look at the at the card. The card is stacked, by the way, um, but the fighters don't do shit. Like Ian Mach <laughs> Machado, Gary, I'm sorry, it's just fine that he uses the double his double name. Um you see he's doing, he's using that name clearly to to gain an advantage to to get some traction, but no one really cares. What the hell? Um Jessica Penn is back, she's been around forever. Well, who else do we have? Yeah, the rest I don't know, which is great fighters. I'm just saying, like I'm not surprised that there's no media coverage of the very early fights obviously but i mean i, I just rattled uh, uh, like 10 fighters or so right um I rattled the names down and they're not doing anything if the ufc is not promoting you you should be pr promoting yourself you should promote your fight you should tell the world why they have to tune in why they should not like be out there and the, like buying popcorn why they have to be in there watching you in the prelims or whatever why they have to tune in early why they should Tune in before the pay-per-view starts because you're the one that's going to make a difference. You're the one putting on a show. You're the one that they want to see. You're the one that's going to steal the show. Why is no one doing that? Now, 80% of people are just going to tune in for like the co-main event and the main event. Like, people, it's your life. What are you going to do after you get, get, get punched in the face for like 10 years? You can't count on having a pension or whatever. And if you're not a super mega superstar, then what are you going to do? Ah, Guys, girls, whatever you identify as, you gotta gotta do more there. It's for your own benefit, not for mine, for the audience, for your own benefit. If we care about you, you're gonna make more money and you're gonna be safe. Let me know what you think. Is the UFC doing enough? Should the fighters do more? What should they do more to make you care about them? Shout out in the comments at Funkitpod on social media. Funkitpod at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe, rate this podcast so that we have a bigger audience and then maybe can even help some of those fighters to find a platform or to have a platform. Until then, as always, stay safe, take care, keep your guard up, and we talk after John Jones is the new heavyweight champion. Sorry, Cup. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not.